So I learned from my mistake on my previous DEX arbitrage trading bot and rebuilt a new arbitrage bot. But this time, I am not going to depend on RPC URL. I am definitely going to run my own nodes and I am not going to query the blockchain like I did before to fetch the pairs because that was taking a long time. And I am not going to use flash loan for now and I am not going to do triangular. This time around, I am going to do simple arbitrage with different exchanges. Now, let me show you one of the advanced function of these arbitrage bots. After showing you, I will then walk you through the code of these arbitrage bots. Now I am going to navigate to Abyscan because this MEV is in Arbitrum network. Then paste the Uniswap factory contract address. Now if you go to events, you are going to see logs. And from this log, you are going to see pool created. So any pair that is created on Uniswap V3 is going to be added to this log. And it is very easy and time effective to fetch these pairs from this log rather than querying the blockchain just to fetch pairs. And on Arbitrum Network, it takes me less than two seconds to fetch all the pools compared to when I was fetching on my previous bot directly from the blockchain. Let me navigate to the code of this trading bot and walk you through the code. So I imported the necessary dependencies here and connect to my RPC URL here. So these are the exchanges that I am going to arbitrage on, which is Uniswap, V3, Sushiswap, Cyberswap, and all these exchanges. So what I am going to do is, on this step one, I'm, I'm going to fetch and match arbitrage pairs from all these exchanges. So it means for each of these exchange, it, I am going to route all the available tokens in other exchanges to this, each of these exchanges. I created an empty dictionary here and then add the exchange name and then look over this exchange name list. For each of the exchange name, I am going to add it to this list, which is going to be the exchange name as the key of this list as well as the pool properties from this exchange.fetch pool. Now, let me go to this exchange.fetch pool and show you one of the ways I advance this board on fetching of pools. So if you go to fetch pools, it, you see that fetch pool takes in decentralized exchange name and also Web3 provider. And for this, if the exchange is Uniswap V2 protocol exchange, we are going to call this function and then return this Uniswap V2 DEX for this specific action that we call this function on. But if that is not the case, we are going to open this dependency to get that block number that we fetch pairs if we already fetch the pairs. So after that, we create some variables that store some data here. And here we get the last time we fetch block. So if we couldn't get it, maybe probably this is the first time we are fetching the pool. We are going to say from block is equals to zero because we want to start from the first genesis block to find out the pair greater. So you can see from here, I call the factory address of a specific exchange and then go to dot events method and dot pair greater. This is the pair greater on the factory address of the smart contract of the exchange. This is more effective way of fetching pairs, very fast when you fetch pairs in this way. So after fetching that pairs, I am going to put it into try except block because at some given point, if the pairs is too much, web3.py is not going to return all. So if that is the case and it unable to fetch the pairs, then we are going to paginate. Then if we check the message that the error has and if the message include this if the message include this log response site exceeded that means we are trying to fetch more than what we can fetch so we are going to paginate it here so this is how i paginated the fetching of pairs so it can fetch through pagination so after that i am going to look through all the events that i fetched which is pair graded if events on the blockchain and then append it into this pool list that I created as a variable here. After that, 
we are going to do some verification to see that the pool list is not empty. If the length is equal to zero, we just, we just return this because there's no pool to fetch. That means there's no pool to fetch at this moment. This is still work in progress. And this is how we are going to call a smart contract to validate the pool that I just fetched, like to use, check out the liquidity in that pool. If it is up to the threshold and the tolerance, then we will use it. We will take the pool to arbitrage on the pool. And what I like about DEX arbitrage is that the transaction is atomic. So it means if anything goes wrong, maybe the token is a scam token, the transaction is going to reverse and you only have to pay gas fee. You are not losing any of your funds. So after that validation, we are going to return the pool list. So that's exactly, so that exactly what is returned here. We have a list and we add that list into this dictionary. We keep adding it with the exchange name as the key of that digs. So after that, we are going to match the pools. And the way we match the pools is that we take one exchange and scan other exchanges for each of the tokens, for each of the pools in that exchange, we scan other exchanges to see if there is the same pools with the same cryptocurrencies of that pool in that exchange. So that's exactly what this function does. So after we have completed that, we are then going to call step two, which is start arbitrage. If I go to the definition of this start, start arbitrage, you are going to see that it takes in the centralized exchange name list, the list of all the decks that we are going to arbitrage. And from there, I created this peak in which you can select the exchange that you want to use as the base exchange. So that is going to be the exchange that you are going to start trading from. So you are scanning the arbitrage from that exchange to another exchange. So after that, we are going to load the arbitrage pairs, which is this pair, Dex all pools. For example, if I click on this Uniswap V2 arbitrage pairs, you are going to see I have a JSON of all the pools in Uniswap. So like, for example, this pool, this ABC has to be the name of the tokens, the symbol of the token. But for now, it's still work in progress. So now you can see this pool address. This is the pool address. And this is other exchanges that the same pool is available. So whenever we go through this pool, we are going to check this sushi swap, check cyber swap, check Camelot, and check all the exchanges for any potential arbitrage. So after that, I created this MEV contract input list, which is going to be the list I will pass to the execution smart contracts. So this is how I fill this list so that the smart contract will understand the kind of data I am passing in. So this data is going to be a kind of data I will pass in to search for arbitrage. Remember my previous bot that I did, I was actually fetching liquidity from the blockchain and then scan for arbitrage on, spy, on my Python script. But this time I am going to pass in this data that I have into a blockchain and the blockchain is going to find arbitrage inside the blockchain and return any potential token that has arbitrage with different exchanges to me. And once it returned to the Python script, the Python script would then call the smart contract again to execute the arbitrage. This is more better than as I did before, because this time the blockchain is going to be on my computer. No more querying of third party API to connect to the blockchain. So on the smart contract side of this MEV, but I only have these contracts here, which is Fluorinix MEV Secha.Soul. This contract is still in development process <laughs> with Solidity 0.8.7. This function is the function I am going to call to validate the pool. You can see it takes in an array of pools and also takes in the minimum liquidity tolerance, which is going to be the minimum liquidity we want to be on the pool before we can arbitrage. For example, if the pool does not have up to two ETH or three ETH, then we don't want to arbitrage on the pool, like because of price impact, like I said before. So what this function does is that it goes for each of the pools that I pass in on this pool array. And it goes for this pool and get the token zero and token one address of that pool. And after that, it's going to check which token is ETH, ETH, 
USDC, which is going to be this token in which I call the base token, because we don't want to arbitrage any token that doesn't have this USDC or ETH or USDT on it. If the pool is ABC, XYZ, then we are not going to arbitrage that pool. We only have to arbitrage the pool that has this token in it. So that is why I call this function get best token to get the best token. So once we get the best token, we make sure that the best token is not equal to zero address. Okay, once we check that, we then check if the base index, which is the best token index, is coming from index zero of this base token array, which is equals to WETH. Then we are then going to associate the minimum liquidity array into the minimum liquidity tolerance variable here, which is going to be the amount of ETH in where. If that is not the case, we are then going to assign the minimum liquidity array that we pass in index zero, which is going to be USD amount, not in where. And then we are going to convert it to where here and then assign it to this variable. After that, we are going to get the liquidity of this pool, of the base token of the pool. So that is why we call the token address, which is the base token of that pool. It might be USD, USDT, WETH, and we get the liquidity of the base token on that pool. Once we get the liquidity, we then check to make sure that the liquidity is greater than or equals to the minimum liquidity tolerance. If that is the case, what we are going to do is that we are going to add it into a valid pool. So that is the pool data that we have here. So, and this is the array of the validated pool stroke type. And that is where we are going to add the valid pool into that array. And we are going to do this for all the pools that we pass in into this smart contract function. The smart contract is only going to return pools that has the minimum liquidity tolerance. So this bot is still under development. And if you are interested to run this bot, click on the subscribe button and stay tuned because I am going to release this bot to the public completely free of charge for limited time. If you are interested in DEX arbitrage and you want to try it out, this is where you should go. So stay tuned and join Discord on the description of this video. Comments, I am interested to try out this arbitrage bot. And once I release this bot, you are going to be the first person that I am going to send this bot to. So see you in the next video.